Hello and welcome to Core Finance in association with the Next Exchange. I'm joined by Fraser Thompson, who is the CEO of Chapel Down Group PLC. Thank you very much for coming on to the show. Pleasure. So let's start off Chapel Down. Um, talk us briefly through the story and how you've come to be one of uh, the UK's leading wine producers. Well, blimey, how far back do you go? Well, it's been, uh, we've been something like 15 years, people thinking we're bonkers, and then mm -hmm. Tattinger plant a vineyard next to ours in Kent, and suddenly we're visionary geniuses. But if you go back 15 years, uh, we identified really an opportunity, I think, based on the terroir that was existed in mm -hmm. England at the time, chalk, the most precious commodity in the, in the wine world, what champagne is grown on, uh, and the opportunity to grow grapes on that chalk. And for a long time, we were continuing to try and build stocks of, uh, of that wine up and sell it. Uh, and really in the last seven or eight years, it's just exploded. Uh, and we're now stocked in, you know, from number 10 Downing Street, we're one of a thousand companies to inspire Britain. We're a cool brand officially. We're in the Walpole Group. We're in Gordon Ramsay. We're in Jamie Oliver. Suddenly this, uh, this, this thing that we thought was going to be interesting has just exploded into life. And it's, it's genuinely uh, a joyful story of actually how you can create something almost from nothing. And you're listed on the next exchange. What, what has that enabled you to achieve as a company and, and maybe take the company to the next step? Well, we were lucky uh, a long time back to, to get an investor called Nigel Ray involved. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was in 2004. And we were on the edge, we were listed on OFFEX at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually the OFFEX was really no more than giving us the discipline of being able to present ourselves as a serious company. Uh, so we had to go through the processes and disciplines of being a listed company, albeit the rules are slightly softer than they are on, on AIM. And it's served us very well over the years. And in fact, uh, although it's not the most massively traded stock, actually Chapel Down is traded about as frequently as a mid-cap stock in, in, in AIM, in fact. So it's not a hugely traded stock, but it is it does give us a market for, for, for this. And actually, as a consumer brand, it's important that we engage with, with investors. And they see the value in, in having a value to, to what they see on the, on the next exchange. So it's given us discipline, it's given us a core from which we've built. And uh, you, you mentioned brands. Now, now you've built yourself up as a brand. What has that allowed you to do and, and develop the company and, and diversify? Well, uh, well, Chapel Down at its core, it, it, we're a winemaker. It doesn't matter how big our beer gets or our gin or our vodka or our retail business. Actually, we're a winemaker. And that's the gift. That's the real insight was actually as a winemaker, we're given license to do things that other people simply can't. Mm -hmm. So a winemaker's beer is always going to be more interesting than actually even a brewer's beer. So it, it brings something interesting and new because winemakers are given this gift of not really caring what the consumer thinks. They do what they think is right. They have a connection with the earth. And those, that sort of branded value in that is hugely valuable. Uh, and so we're starting to see the benefit of that with the beer, for example. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a beer that nobody else can do. You know, craft beer is, is fine and it's really interesting and it's booming. But lots of people are chasing the same goal in that. And it's very difficult to make something that's genuinely unique and uncopyable. Well, a winemaker's beer is very difficult to copy if you're not a winemaker. Mm -hmm. uh, and we use champagne yeast. And it's given us a, a, another string. And that's been very important because wine is a very cash degenerative business. Mm -hmm. It takes a long time. You've got to plant vines. You've got to wait three years till the grape comes off. Wait another three years before you're able to make a bottle of wine. Beer, on the other hand, is, is much more of a, a, a cash machine. And so the two work very well in harmony together. So we've been able to build a business uh, from the wine uh, base mm -hmm. uh, and give it a, a beer business a really unique proposition. And so that's really gold dust for marketeers. It's something that's a genuinely unique, hard to copy, global potential uh, phenomenon. And that's what we've got with the beer. And it's, it's a phenomenal success. So we're really chuffed with what we've done with that. And then, then of course, we've got gin. Mm -hmm. And so gin, there's thousands of gins out there. Why would you choose Chapel Down gin? Because it's made as only a winemaker can make it. It's made using the skins of our grapes. And so it is unique and distinctive. And that's really what this company is all about doing things that other people can't or won't do. Uh, we're seeing the large drinks companies, for example, are starting to sort of outsource all their innovation to M&A. Mm -hmm. uh, because what, what drinks company would ever have come up with a crazy idea of English sparkling wine? Uh, and that's the kind of thing that happens is that, you know, they couldn't, 
now they're looking and it looks fantastic. Uh, and it's, you know, we want to be the market leader in that, in that market. And, uh, we are you, the market leader in that market. <laughs> Fantastic. And you've been able to uh, raise capital through an open offer uh, recently of uh, 18.5 million. What are you looking to, to do with that capital? Well, firstly, I mean, it's a transformative sum of money for oh. us. I mean, bear in mind this is this is almost twice last year's sales is what we've just raised, and we've raised it at, you know, um, five times uh, five times sales value and sixty eight times EBITDA. It's been it's been a fantastic investment for us. But what it gives us is really a, a huge opportunity to do all the things that we wanted to do and do them contiguously. So, uh, firstly, we need to plant up more vineyards. So, the one thing about our business at the moment is we just can't make enough of the stuff. So, planting more vineyards that's priority number one. Number two is bringing those vineyards to fruition and, and building the stock levels up with it. Number three, pressing the gas really quite hard on the beer side. So we're building a brewery in Ashford and the opportunities for us to grow that beer are phenomenal, which is why we've hired the, the former managing director of Brewdog to come mm -hmm. and join us, along with our LVMH business director who we hired to run the wine business. And then finally, we've got a, a, a sum of money for dry powder effectively, and that can be for acquisitions, but it could also be for building the business as it currently is. So for example, the gin and the vodka, which we, uh, a no cost development of, uh, of doing that. And if we wanted to step on the gas on the gin, we could do so for example, or uh, start rolling the industry up. I mean, we tended to think that uh, actually English wine will at some stage mature like all other markets around the world. And we want to play our part in helping to consolidate that market mm -hmm. over time. So when the values uh, seem to be correct, we'll be in a great position as market leader and with you know, plenty of cash and good value paper to be able to do some great deals, I hope. And you've already kind of touched on, on what it will allow you to do. Where do you see yourself in, let's say, 12 months and, or, or maybe 24 months down the line? Well, in, term, in terms of a company, mm -hmm. um, we see ourselves as, uh, as the most exciting drinks company in England. And actually, it's a journey towards getting to that. So one thing we do need to do is continually engage with consumers and make sure that we're selling and engaging with consumers with what our story is. So priority number one, I know that sounds a bit kind of obvious, but it is the single most important thing we do. This, this company uh, is all about its brands and brands are all about engaging with consumers. So we've got to make sure that's correct. The second thing is to try and make sure we've got the people and the systems and the processes in place that we are a genuine grown-up company mm -hmm. rather than a kind of entrepreneurial startup that's kind of fudging its way through. I'm not saying that's where we are, but we do need to make mm -hmm. sure that we're professionalising right the way through the network. So that's attracting and retaining really the best talent. So we've started that process now so that investors can feel comfortable that we've got a fantastic group of people doing a wonderful job for them. So, so that's really, you know, 12, to 12 months to 24 months, that's the initial plan. Uh, and then obviously... The longer term plan is, is basically to conquer the world. And finally, more on a personal note, what wine would you recommend from the uh, Chapel Down stable? I, I, I have tried a few and uh, I am a big fan, I must confess. What would you recommend maybe for, for the coming months? To, to drink straight away, well, not to lie down? I, yes, I, well, I, I, nothing stays in my cellar for very long. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Fizz obviously is, is fantastic, and if you can afford the Kits Coty uh, Blanc de Blanc, then mm -hmm. you should buy that or the Three Graces. Fabulous fizz will suit you all the way through the Christmas period, uh, and with your with your lunch, uh, the Christmas lunch, I, I'd suggest the Chardonnay that we do, which is a which is a really fantastic substitute for Burgundy. It's better than Burgundy and half the price. So buy that. Super. I'm rushing out to order one as we speak. <laughs> Fraser Thompson, CEO of Chapel Down Group. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.